Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Outer Wilds. I am very intrigued by what we've seen so far. Uh, and you know what? Maybe we should try to figure out what that is. I was kind of thinking that our first move, and we're just going to go right to the spaceship. You're going to want to get the launch codes from the observatory first. Uh, you know what? I already got them. Remember? Don't you remember how I already got them? Huh. Must be inhaling more fumes than I realized. That stuff is potent. Well, if you got the codes, I'm not going to stop you. Good luck and take care of that ship. Yeah, the ship is the least of our concerns. Uh, so my initial thought was um, I would go and explore whatever that thing was that was really close to the sun before the sun starts growing into a red giant, because I think there's a chance that it gets obliterated pretty quickly. But I wonder... Hmm. What I was about to say is I wonder if maybe we should just jet up and then go and... Uh, need to zoom it like this. Okay. Wondering if we should just go up and examine that thing that fell, but now I'm wondering if getting into the ship is even the smart way to do that. Or maybe we should just go to the Adel Rock. Like we were, we were sort of pointed toward the Adel Rock first. Maybe there's important starting information there. But I do really want to find out what that is. Yeah, this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna try to get to that thing. Uh, so we want liftoff. It's going to take me a little while to get used to these controls. Apologies if that is frustrating. Okay, I think we are, we are good and clear. The Adder Rock definitely has some weird stuff on it. So my guess is that the thing near the sun must be important because it probably gets destroyed pretty early in the process. The process of the loop. Hey, I'm like really actually moving toward the sun at an incredible speed right now. So maybe we could maybe we can stop that. I'm trying really hard to go up right now. It's actually like um Well <laughs> you could see down there in the uh in the thruster indicator that I was holding away from the star, but it turns out gravity, I think, is probably a little bit of what occurred there. It's just gonna take me a second to get the hang of this. Uh, I have not played, like, Kerbal Space Program or anything. I got no space experience, is where I'm going with this. I have even less ex space experience, maybe, than a lot of video game players. Uh, for example, I think the last space game I played a lot of was, like, Freelancer on the Dreamcast, and before that, probably TIE Fighter, which gives you an idea of how old I am. So, let's just try to be a little bit more cautious here. Okay. Alright, so we need to... we need to slow. We need to go slowly. There is no easy inertia dampener. So... Unfortunately, there doesn't seem... I'm just going to uh, bounce. I'm just going to bounce a little bit off of the surface of this world. It's remarkably hard to fly this thing, in my defense. Okay, we are going to approach the sun carefully. So out here, we are going to try to match velocity with it. We are hardly moving at all, sun relative. And we're just going to take it slow, try to get close, and kind of get into orbit. It takes a while to speed match. So you can see the lower of the two numbers to the right there is our speed relative to the object, it looks like. So it's really, really easy to get going again. I'm just going to try to fly alongside. It has a big rune on it. Yeah, gravity. Yep, okay. It's actually extremely hard to get close to the sun and not get immediately sucked into it. So <laughs> maybe that thing is not a good first exploration. You know, I thought the space travel stuff was going to be easy because we managed to land on that uh, that first planetoid, whatever it is, uh, pretty easily, but wait a minute. That's coming down in a different place this time than it did last time. Right? Wasn't It was over there before. 
Okay. We need to figure out what that is. Let's make that our goal, since uh, getting to that thing near the sun seems very difficult, and uh, I am bad at it. We might learn something eventually that's... Um, okay, so do I have... I don't have my tools, right? Yeah, I can't pull anything up. If I suit up and then go back down... Okay, so I, I have my scout launcher now. Let's equip the scout launcher and launch the scout and show me something. It was approximately in this direction, right? Uh, oh, the scout has tipped over. Okay, I don't know exactly what we're looking for. Maybe it'll be more obvious if we're over there. The scout images being kind of low res and also black and white makes it a little tricky to use it for this purpose. Okay, I'm just gonna carefully up, carefully. Okay, so I'm getting the hang of this. We can kind of skim along the surface of the planetoid. Oh, also sliding. <laughs> it's a good thing that this, <laughs> this is fairly forgiving, is what I'm learning. Ah, I guess the, the computer is made out of uh, alien tech. That probably makes a lot of sense. All right, so I don't need the suit for the purpose of running around on our world, but we might encounter some ruins, and I would, uh, some Nomai, you know, writing or something. And I would like to have all my tools with me, if possible, for that purpose. Okay. Well, this is definitely something interesting, isn't it? I'm assuming... Oh, wow. Well, I can't seem to interact with this at all. I wonder if this is a timer. Sort of a broad assumption from the fact that it's round and it moves. Uh, but I wonder if that's what that if that's telling us how much time is left before the event. All right, let's just have a look around here. Turns out there's lots of lots of interesting stuff to find, even if you don't go into space because you're afraid of accidentally crashing into the sun. This is a weird structure. All right, gravity here is not quite what I would like for this, but I wonder if we can go through the the waterfall. Like if there's something on the other side of that. Also, I should be keeping an eye on the time. So we're like 7.50 into the recording right now. I want to have some idea of exactly how long we have. I guessed that the event took about half an hour based on the fact that it uh, probably did not start counting until either we saw the Nomai statue turn to us or until we got into space just so that, you know, the player wouldn't get obliterated while they were walking around talking to people pleasantly without any idea at all what was going on. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, wow, just just by looking at that, I can move it. I can move. Oh, here we go. Look at that. What was I talking about? I already don't remember. <coughs> Turns out it's extremely easy to distract me and make me lose my train of thought. Wow, that's a Noai skeleton just right here on our world. How has nobody ever been here? I presume, I presume if somebody had ever been here, that skeleton would be in the museum. Okay, I hate this. Let's go. Okay, thrusters. Oh, I actually, the, even, even at maximum thrust, I can't go up. The thruster's not powerful enough to go up in this chamber. What is going on here? Are these, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, water physics are wild. Uh, my first thought here is that something burrowed these holes and was living in them, and whatever it is, I don't want to meet it, given the size of the holes. But maybe... <clears throat> they might be too round. It might be the case that these are machine board instead. Because they are very round. Uh 
Oh, okay. That's a that's a geyser thing. Oh wait. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. We're gonna fall back onto the geyser thing. Come on. Come on, geyser. There we go. Yeah, this is something promising. Okay, so this is one of those um, pedestals, like we saw surrounded by all the cactuses. Cacti? Like we saw surrounded by more than one cactus. What could these... I don't have the option to interact with them. Yeah, we're not picking up any interesting signals coming from them. Wait. Huh, 241 meters. I mean, the the Lost Explorer was the one who had the harmonica, right? Has he been inside our planet the whole time? Let's see where this goes. I'm going to try for the sake of uh, both myself and you, the viewer, to explore things in a relatively systematic way, but I'm going to be honest with you, this is definitely the kind of game where I would just wander around and get lost for a bunch of hours before figuring out what's going on off-camera. Oeno says, I'm still amazed by how much ore the Ash Twin Project requires. Psychad responds, Isn't this the ore for the remaining towers being built on Ash Twin? The, t the completed towers I've seen are surprisingly big. Oeno responds, no, the material for those towers is all being taken from Ash Twin. The ore we're currently mining will be used to create a protective shell that will seal off the Ash Twin's core. And I guess this means there are two responses to this thing? So they were spiraling out from it in two directions? I'm relieved by our clan's decision to use Timberhearth's ore for constructing the shell only. If, eventually, life on this planet were to evolve to the point of advanced metallurgy, I'm confident we won't have destroyed their ability to create. Okay, well, that's thoughtful of them. Wait, all of this ore is for the shell? I hope they measured the shield's area and planned according, accordingly. They've done a bad job of this pun. So what we know about these aliens is that they have crazy writing style, they're incredible architects, and they're very bad at humor. I thought you had forbidden your apprentice from making puns, Coleus. How else would he improve? Okay, so... Coleus, Cycad, and Oeno. Maybe. <laughs> All of these names are extremely guesses. Remove scroll. Oh, wow. Uh, can I put this away, or... Can... Okay, so potentially, if I was not able to just put that away and switch to my other tools... Okay, but whenever I put one of my other tools away, it's back in my hand. So but my guess from that is that we are not intended to carry this a long distance. If we could have like put it away into some kind of inventory, then I would suspect... Huh. There are an awful lot of places I'm allowed to put this scroll down. Uh, then I would suspect that maybe it was intended to be carried somewhere far away. But... If it's going to constantly be taking up my hand, I assume we're supposed to put it somewhere nearby? That's going to shoot us out of the cavern, I bet. Let's just have a look around here. So I can put it down on basically any rock. I can just put it down anywhere. Okay. Can it fit into any of those little pedestal things? Some of them had indentations, right? Okay, well that's not... Yeah, that, <laughs> that hole is not the same shape as this peg. Nor is that... Some, okay. Well, that would be my preliminary guess, is that we're looking for one of these... Oh, hold on. And also pick up the Ash Twin Projection Stone. So that, that planet we were on is Ash Twin. Which makes sense, given, you know, it's a binary, so of course the, the name Twin. Well, this looks like it is the same shape as one of these, right? Oh, look at this, we've, we've found the tutorial for this mechanic. Oh, wow. That's having an effect. Okay, so this is the symbol that we see when we die. 
There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them around us. And these ones are lit up. What does that mean? Can I walk out of this area? Okay, if I walk away from the projection stone, I lose the thing. And it doesn't come back if I walk in. Do I get it? Yeah, okay, we do get it back if we reset it. All right, all right, well, presumably this will have some meaning to us eventually. Yeah, I uh, expect that we're going to spend a long time developing a lot of weird questions before we start to get any answers at all. All right, you're coming with me, scroll. I guess let's fall back down. It wouldn't be too hard to get back up here. Or I guess we can just follow this. And there are a lot of Know My Skeletons in here. Actually, I should be paying more attention to the number of them. Because if it's three, it could reasonably be the three people who wrote on that piece of wall, right? Alright, let's try to get over to there. Oh, right, of course. Actual physics, like the waterfall pushes us downward. It's going to take me a little while to figure out which parts of this behave like the real world and not like most video games. There could be a, a, a slot at the back of one of these board holes. If there is, that's going to be a little difficult to find. Is it possible to get into this thing down here? Oh, the gaps are too small for me to climb into. Alright, so really the only way out of the water... Oh, hold on. We have a lot of thrust down here. I wonder if I can just shoot upward. Oh, shoot. I accidentally hit the geyser. Ow! And then the roof. Okay, the good news is hitting the roof didn't actually seem to damage us. Okay, where does that go? It doesn't go anywhere, in fact. Why do they have a like a transporter tube built into a hole in the wall? Huh. Okay, so oh yeah, I guess we already are at the top of this. I was looking up at this and just assuming that it went up to the surface, but no, this is just where it deposits you. Okay. <clears throat> well, that makes it very easy to return to this platform. I mean, maybe we should carry this back to the ship and explore a little more for it. We certainly, by the way, have gotten distracted from <laughs> figuring out what it was that landed on our planet as we were waking up. Um, hmm. That's interesting. What if I put the triangle on the triangle? What do you mean nothing happens? How is that not the correct answer? How could that possibly be the case? Oh, there's a series of little platforms over there. Let's see if we can get onto those. Also, it seems like the triangular shape is maybe just really important to them. Because all of their lights are triangles as well. Or maybe it's just a shape they find aesthetically pleasing. So this time... We're going to try this again, but without jumping directly into the waterfall. I think I, probably I can make it from here using the thruster. Ow. <laughs> it's a good thing you don't take damage from collisions. Okay, this is just the exit. Where were those little platforms? Oh, they're right here. Maybe this is the way you're initially supposed to descend into the cavern, and I just missed it. And if that's the case, then I would not necessarily expect there's going to be anything valuable over here at all. Yeah, these are... These are definitely too round to have been burrowed by a, by a creature or anything. Well, what the hell is this whole chamber for? Also, I had kind of assumed that um, 
in that zero G practice area. The guy who sent us in there, and you'll notice I already can't remember anybody's name. Uh, the guy who sent us in there had painted the stars and space pattern on the walls to make it feel more like a space adventure. But now I'm thinking that there's just rock naturally occurring in this world that looks like that. Okay, so the scroll... The scroll is actually what causes the text to, like, spray out onto the wall. It's really interesting. What on earth are we supposed to do with that? Alright, maybe we can't figure this out yet. Maybe, maybe we'll come back once we have some more information. But now we know where there is a triangular thing. In case we find a triangular hole later. Alright, I'm starting to get the hang of that, I think. Uh, if I hit... Do I have, like, a... Where's my log button? Oh, the log's on the ship. That's right. We should check out the ship. I'm assuming that it does not remember anything from uh, from day to day, but it's possible that it does because of video game logic or because of know my magic. I also kind of want to see what's underneath here, but I don't know if I want to see it badly enough to fall down there. I guess they're, they have provided for us a way to get back up. Yeah, let's go have a look. Okay, it's just a bunch of water. Oh, no, hold on. It's not just a bunch of water. There is something down there. Damn it, geysers. Right, let's try this again. Yeah, no, this is definitely actually something. Coleus. After closer observation, mining site 2A wouldn't be safe for the native life dwelling in some of this cave's pools. So, unfortunately, we'll have to mine from one of the other sites. Psychad responds, there are a few other cave sites that look promising. What about Site 2B? It shares similar formations and strata. This sounds promising. Will you and your mentor investigate? If mining Site 2B pro uh, proves safe for this native species, we'll move our work there. Psychad says, Site 2B is safe. Coleus says, we'll continue to monitor our activity and its effect on life here. Sort of a, um, kind of a Starfleet ethos going on here. On the opposite hand, new life. The species is semi-aquatic and very hardy. The ecosystem here is quite robust, so I believe they'll thrive in the long run. Be cautious near the pools if you visit 2A to meet them. So they were here while we were still unevolved. They remind me of a subterranean species that my mentor Melloray once told me about from when our clan used to travel across this universe. I imagine she would have enjoyed these life forms greatly. Alright, so we've, we've seen some writing from Melloray. Something happened... Is that just the geysers? Man, the geysers are super loud. I turned down the game audio a little bit, so it's not drowning me out, uh, hopefully. But I might have to turn it down more, because it's just like a lot of white noise. I was watching them once during a rest, and the hours escaped from me. They're fascinating. I wonder what their fourth eye does. Uh, well, it provides quadrocular vision, as you might imagine. So this is just, this is just providing light. This is not a thing. What is this, though? Um, how do I... Photo mode... Snapshot. Seems important. Okay, so the three the three dots here... Maybe this is how the Nomai draw themselves? So this could be the eyes, right? And this is us. This is with our four eyes. This is us crawling out of the water to be fascinated by them. During our early primordial state. Well, that's fascinating, but I don't know that it's useful, necessarily. Let's try to swim around down here. Alright, the current, I'm assuming, yeah, is not going to let me go in there. But it looks like the current could pull us through here. This is something I would be terrified to do if there was any risk of serious um, consequences. But fortunately, I suspect if we find a way to die, we will simply wake up on the planet's surface. Okay, so there's man-made stuff down here. And these look like Arthian barrels, right? These, 
This looks like the same stuff we saw in the village. So maybe this is where um, stuff from the failed landings has crashed. Or the failed space flights, rather. Ow. Turns out uh, that's not the surface of the water, it's the roof of the chamber. So a lot of garbage and detritus has washed into this chamber and gotten stuck. Oh, there are holes in there. Okay, so we could we could take one of these geysers. Oh my god, they're so slow underwater. Yeah, where is this going to deposit? Well, in the air, of course. Oh! Ow, falling damage is an actual real thing. Okay, well, we found a way up here. I don't know that this is actually a particularly healthy uh, or helpful outcome for our little trip. But let's just try to get back in there. Now. We just need to go in during a time. Come on. There we go. There we go. We need to wait for the geyser to end and then... And here we should be okay to just fall because of all the water. Yeah, let's try going down this tunnel. Is this going to loop us back around to the tablet chamber, or... No, oh, that's inconvenient. Well, maybe that's inconvenient, depending on where this spits us out. Maybe this is actually awesome. Nope. Didn't do anything at all. Just kind of shot us into the sky for no reason. Can I fight the current at all? No. I'm trying hard to, uh... Firing maximum jets in the opposite direction. There is nothing we can do to stop the current once we're in it. At least not yet. All right, let's see where this goes. I mean, that kind of looks significant up there. It's hard, hard to tell from this distance. Unidentified signal nearby. So that's not very nearby. Maybe that down there is what they were referring to? And by they, I mean our suit. Ow. I, uh, I tried to fire the upthrusters, but too late. Turns out you gotta pull your chute uh, a little bit earlier in the fall. Alright, my new goal is to survive long enough for the sun to actually explode. We have to figure out what the length of the loop is. That's going to be important information. Feels like they could maybe play this back a little bit faster. Or maybe the loop doesn't even start if you don't go into space. Okay. That time, it's this time it's coming down more where it appeared to come down initially. Wait, maybe it never lands. Yeah, no, it's just moving. So it came from the big green planet. I assumed it was landing because we lost sight of it. Turns out, not a safe assumption. Well, I've gotten distracted from all of our other goals. I want to know what that is. Fortunately, it is staying right in front of us. All right, we're taking off at about 29 minutes into the recording. I think it's going away from me. Pretty sure. So maybe we'll never be able to catch it. And right, not to lose speed as I go into the map. Yeah, maybe we can't ever catch this. Yeah, it looks like I hit the I hit the edge of the map. They don't want me going out here. Okay, so you're not intended to catch and interact with that. Fair enough. I don't have any control at all right now. 
It is slowing me. It feels like the speed changes could maybe be a little bit faster. Apparently we're still not back in the area yet. Okay, well why don't we try this then? Giant's Deep? Oh, Giant's Deep is the big water planet, isn't it? I don't think I want to go to Giant's Deep. I have a thing about water that is too deep for me to see the bottom of. We'll go there. We'll have to. Let's not make it our first trip. I'm just thinking about spooky space fish. And... So where do we want to go? All right, let's try. Let's try getting back to Timber Hearth. I'm trying very, very hard to match speed here. I'm holding the match speed button the maximum amount that one can do that. All right, it seems like match speed is really only match velia match velocity is only viable if you are already kind of close to the velocity of the thing. Is that a comet? Okay, now I'm distracted by the comet. Oh, this is the interloper. I am not the interloper. I misunderstood our uh, map earlier. Okay, I need to get better at reading the space UI. Like, I'm not 100% sure what is signified by the arrows. Okay, so we're going to try to start matching speed now because we cannot change speed very quickly. That said, we are also very far away from this thing yet. It's actually quite large. Well, I don't think it's a... No, no it is a comet, right? It's got ice on the back. Again, what does SB know about space? Okay, so the arrows are indicating our, rel our speed relative to the object, maybe? Does this... I mean, I'm assuming the tail here is indicating that it's traveling toward the sun pretty rapidly. Oh, we're absolutely traveling toward the sun very rapidly. I'm gonna, uh, real quick here, just try to turn. Nope. I have gotten too close to the sun. So maybe the interloper is what starts the process? The sun gets angry because it gets hit by that. Whatever it is touches off the reaction, and that's why it doesn't take a stellar time scale. Can we skip this? No, it does not look like we can. Alright. So the interloper maybe hits the star and touches off the reaction, and that's why it suddenly happens. And as we wake up, something launches out of Giant's Deep and leaves the solar system. But it doesn't always go the same way, which is very strange, considering that it seems like we've gone back in time, so events should unfold the same way. Yeah, this is kind of fascinating to me. I'm very glad that this was recommended. Okay. 32 minutes, oh, about 33 minutes into the recording. We are not going to die. Let's just, let's just look around the planet's surface. We're going to watch carefully and survive until the event occurs. Okay, so here's some massive geysers. I do wish we had better planet scale maps. Man, there are some really massive geysers on this planet. Okay, so that's the bridge that we climbed over. Okay, let's put down up here. Let's see if I can let's see if I can put the ship down up here. Oh, I've hit the wall and now we are falling. Brakes, 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 air brakes. Oh dear, I've turned us over. Okay, that's like... Oh, no, no. <laughs> I thought we were landing, but in fact we were just slowly tipping over. Well, bad news, everybody. I've lost control of the vessel. I'm trying real hard to just get us here. There we go. That's approximately where I want to be. Let's maybe jump over a little bit further. We'll just explore this this cave area a little bit more in total safety. Okay, let's have a look at the ship log.
Okay, so the ship cam totally remembers stuff between deaths. That's actually great. Uh, I don't know that I want to... I don't think we have information enough to try to put anything together yet. But it's nice that I'm not going to have to just remember all this stuff. So... I'm trying to remember whether we searched this direction entirely. We came in through this cave, right? Oh, hard to see when you are under a waterfall. We came from over there. We just have like a tremendous freedom of exploration I sort of don't even know what to do with. Let's see what's over here. Oh, Jesus. I'm in the ghost matter. Well, so what I was about to say before we started go getting ghost mattered was, hey, look, these rocks, these little tiny rocks jutting out of the ground look like the ones uh, in the cavern on Ash Twin. You know, the cavern where we saw the ghost matter. So maybe, um, maybe be more careful when you see those rocks. Okay, we're waking up, and it's about 36 minutes into the recording. And this time, we're not going to die. It's like the montage in Groundhog Day when he uh, has grasped the rules of the universe and is just trying wild stuff and getting killed over and over again. Except, uh, I feel like it was more intentional for him. He sort of had a better idea what he was doing. Okay. Let's take it slow here. We're just going to look around... more carefully, on a nice, safe planet in a way that totally doesn't get us killed by ghost matter. So what's here? This is like a pretty... a pretty serious crater that does not appear to be entirely natural. What is that? It kind of looks like a big clutch of eggs to me. Which is maybe an indication that we shouldn't go closer. Oh, hey, it's a person. Yeah, that is actually very menacing in appearance. Hey there, Tektite. Hey, oh, Hatchling. Thought you were taking that tin can of yours into space today. What are you still doing here? Me? I saw something crash over the horizon and didn't like what I was seeing in the pictures my little scout was sending back. So I thought I'd come over myself and take a look. Is that a dark bramble seed? Oh, you think so? It's nothing I've ever seen on Timber Hearth before. So you're probably onto something there. Oh, you can see Tektite's uh, right foot where he lost it to ghost matter. Whatever it is, it put down roots in a hurry. I don't like the look of this thing, Hatchling, and that's a fact. I think I'll set Marl and Hal loose on it. Best get rid of this mess sooner rather than later, and no one can remove an unwanted pla uh, plant faster than a tree keeper can. I'll have to get a look at what's inside the seed first, though. Don't want to set anybody to hacking up a potentially dangerous plant without a better idea of what's lurking inside there. Tuff can help me haul the old scout launcher over here. Obviously, the opening is too small for someone to fit inside, and anyway, I'm not going to blindly stick my hands into anything that looks as unpleasant as that seed does. It's a good way to lose an arm or two. Is that... that's the opening he's talking about. At first I thought it was, like, a solid white bit in the middle of it, but I think that's just the illumination looking kind of weird. Alright, well, I have a scout launcher. Error. Duplicate signal. Oh, wow, the Scout Launcher is returning some extremely wild information here. So these are rear shots. Oh, it's like a big one of those fish. No, it's... no, it... Is it a skeleton of a big one of those fish? Because there's definitely trees growing in there. The Scout has stopped moving. It has hit a wall. Huh. Okay, I have... No idea what to do with that information. So it's a portal to somewhere. Presumably Dark Bramble. But it's not a portal that I could actually fit into. 
Hmm. Okay, I mean, it's a very interesting piece of information. It's not something we can do anything with right now, though. I guess let's just get out of this crater and back to the ship. I guess let's just get out of this crater and back to the ship. We're going to try that again. Me not being able to walk up what is essentially just a big inclined ladder here. It's not bode well for my interstellar travel capabilities. I will say, um, I'm a little surprised at our fuel efficiency. It seems like it's really hard to run out of fuel. Can we see the interloper? Do I know where the interloper is right now? Okay, interesting. Did it miss? It sort of looks like it misses the sun, but the sun's gravity has it looping back around. Also, what is this way out here? Hey, now, that's interesting. It's like distorting the image of the things around it. All right, so it looks to me like we probably have quite a bit of time. It's got to be somewhere between, unless the first loop is distorted terribly, or I'm not correctly reading what the start conditions for it would have been. It's probably between an hour and a uh, half an hour, right? right? Let's just keep moving along the planet's surface and looking for other interesting things and trying not to go into space because space is very scary. So here's the big geysers. I guess we could try to see... Let's land kind of hard. We try to see where the big geyser there drops you if you climb into it. Hey, I did a pretty good job of that. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay. Takes you into the, uh, the tide cave. Interesting. This doesn't even actually deliver you all the way out. We could have gotten up if we had wanted to. If I had uh, fired the thrusters there. So maybe that's a thing that's worth doing. In which chamber does this deposit us in? Okay, a chamber with some roots, a single exit geyser, and another exit door. Oh, let's see where the exit, uh, exit geyser goes. Well, first of all, it slams you into a big... Wow, oh, man, even, even firing the jets... We landed really hard there. Oh, one of these. Okay. Yeah, it slams you into a wall as you come out of it, so it, like, ricochets you off. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's swapping positions with a tree. It's not just moving. It's also moving that tree around. Yeah, that's really interesting. So the crystals can have an effect on the things around them. Presumably there is an arrangement here for that tree that helps us solve some kind of puzzle. Wait, the signpost. Okay. <laughs> the signpost is one of the objects that is switching around. Cross old bark, it's always dark, the quiet shade in the ancient glade. Is this the work of that fisherman? All right, we're getting like a weird signal nearby. What am I, what am I seeing here? Okay, that's very strange. Unfortunately, that's sort of right. The signpost. Uh, so the tree that the signs are attached to is one of the objects in the glade that moves. Wait. 
Did the signs change? I thought the top two were facing in the same direction and the bottom two were. Okay, it's right, left, left, right right now. Let's get it to move. Now, yeah, now it's left, right, right, left. That's very strange. Even if the tree doesn't move, the signs are actually, they're changing order. Huh. What do we do with this? Right, this geyser is not the one that we shout, uh, shot out of to land here, right? Because it doesn't, it's not angled at a rock face. Well, it looks like there's something... Oh, we're just seeing the geyser texture down there. Huh. I'm trying hard not to get killed. The quiet shade in the ancient glade is... Maybe we have to try to get this into a position where the lines are in a certain order. Can I interact with this at all? I can't, like, pull the signs off of it or anything. Huh. Yeah, so anytime we look away from it, it potentially disappears. Wait a minute, the geyser, the geyser is actually moving around. The geyser is also a movable element. Because it was in the pool a moment ago, wasn't it? This whole, this whole glade is very difficult to deal with. Yeah, the geyser is also moving. Okay, that's interesting. So depending on its position, it could drop you into different caverns below. This is not the position it was in when we, when we came out of it. So I guess let's go down now and see where it is. Okay, it is still in the same little cavern. This is very strange. Right, let's, let's go back up. Because there were some ways to just walk out of that, uh, that area, and I want to see where they go. This is a, a puzzle that we can work on right now that is unlikely to kill us until the heat death of the sun dies. Okay. Firing thrusters. Trying really hard to slow descent. Ow. Only so effective. So I was firing the up thruster the entire time we were falling, and I was using the booster as often as I could. It seems to have a pretty limited amount of fuel, but also a pretty quick recharge. So it seems like uh, if you end up shooting up that high in a place where the gravity is one times normal Harthian gravity, you're just gonna you're gonna damage your legs. That's, that's the, there's no two ways about it. All right, where does this go? We gotta get back to our ship because our ship has our medical supplies. I kind of can't believe how much space they give you to just wander around and discover things. It seems like it might take a while to figure out exactly what elements we need to be interacting with at first. I mean, I'm sure the, the puzzle design, insofar as there is puzzle design, is non-linear. Like, I'm sure it's not. there is one thing that has to be done first and then one thing that has to be done second. It might even be the case that each each planet can sort of be solved in whatever order. We really have no idea what we're looking at mechanically here. What is this? Okay, so the interloper is now on... Oh, it's still not really on approach. Maybe things don't really get wild until we go to space. Maybe the timer never expires if we just hang out on hearth. Chert's research notes. Property of Chert. I've detected a strange signal coming from somewhere within the grove in this crater. It's very similar to the signal e emitted by the quantum moon. So it stands to reason the two signals are probably related. Oh, is there a whole moon that's made out of those crystals that move around when you're not looking at them, maybe? 
We don't know much about the quantum moon, seeing as no one's ever been able to land on it, but hopefully studying the signal in the grove will reveal more about it. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, this is a really awkward place for these research nodes to be. It's like very far away from everything I want to interact with. So do we want to go up onto the outer crust of the planet, or do we want to go back? I guess let's go back down into the glade and have a look around. I'm very nervous. You know what? Actually, let's go back to our ship and uh, med up, and then we'll fly the ship back over here. And that way we'll have a source of medical supplies nearby. Because I really, really, really would like to survive for a while here. So we'll try to keep an eye on the interloper. Now, see, the sun's already gone red giant. It's not that the interloper... Or it's currently going red giant. It's definitely not that the interloper crashes into it and causes that. Because the interloper is still flying around. The interloper is still on its orbit. And you can see the sun has expanded now to a point where the interloper's orbit would no longer be possible. Actually, the interloper might be in a stable orbit. It may be the case that it... Uh, it doesn't really fly out or crash into anything. Well, I think we now know that we do not have to leave the planet's surface for the event to begin. I think we're probably not too, too far from it uh, consuming us. So using a med kit feels a little bit, <laughs> a little bit silly. Okay, uh, where am I going? I did not keep good track of what direction I was traveling in. Okay, there's Chert's research notes. This is probably good enough, right? Do I actually want to try to land the ship in the crater? Yeah, sure, you know what? It doesn't hurt to get a little bit of experience with the ship. And it seems like the ship is basically indestructible, which is nice, because I'm going to fly it into stuff a lot. Let's see, we want... We came this way. I'm just thinking, like, the crater itself is open on the top, so we can land the ship directly in it. Yeah, like this. Aha. Okay, and this way if I get myself hurt in a stupid way, I can very easily repair it. Have I put the ship above one of the locations the geyser can go into? Maybe. It would be a real shame if the geyser appeared under underneath our ship and then shot it into the sky. Alright, uh... That is, in fact, what happened. The, the geyser appeared underneath the ship and kind of rolled it over. Alright, signposts. So, the quiet shade in the ancient glade always points to the right, is that the case? Where did it end up now? I will say the ship's a little inconvenient because it blocks my view of the other side of the crater. Okay, it looks like maybe the quiet shade in the ancient glade is always pointing to... Those two lines are always pointing to the right, no matter which way the signpost is actually facing. So maybe our goal here is to walk the signpost into a place where it's aiming correctly. Across Old Bark, it's always dark. And across Old Bark sounds like, um, sounds like it should be pointed toward the place where we, the, the Dark Bramble area, right? Because we had to walk up an old dead tree to get out of there. That seems possible, at least. Whoa! Okay, we just saw the ship. We didn't see the object move, but we saw the ship react to the object move. Damn it, I looked away from the signpost. Okay, here we go. So where am I? Again, this is where I would really love to have a terrestrial level map. Can we zoom in enough to get a sense of where I am relative to certain things? So we can see a bunch of the big geysers. But no, that's really it. Oh, I guess there's a huge crater there? That's not the crater we're in, is it? I think the crater we're in is maybe a little smaller than that. Okay. Basically, not helpful. Yeah. 
And where exactly is that signal relative to our current position? So it's underneath the pool. No, it's not. It's like pretty distant, actually. Maybe we can figure out approximately where it is underneath and then see if we can get the geyser to appear in that location. Alright, what is up this side? Let's see if we can get the geyser to appear approximately over here. So we have to wait for it not to be shooting, it seems like, and then we look away from it. No, we made it over there now. We need to be in this corner. I don't know where it is now. Oh, it's all, all the way over there. How are we doing on Sun Timer? Okay, Sun looks very large and angry. Okay, so the interloper does collide with the sun eventually, on, a, on account of the sun having increased in size so much. And maybe the interloper touching it is part of the, uh, part of the uh, catalyzing of the supernova? I wonder if it's possible to get the big warp crystal to appear in a place, like, right on top of the geyser so it gets shot out. Things a little finicky. Where exactly is the... Okay, it's like right there. Definitely weird. I don't know what that is supposed to be. Hey, all of a sudden some music has kicked in. Is this the... Is this the danger music? No, not yet. Oh, hey, hi, how you doing? Crystals sometimes sneak right up on you. Alright, so how big is the cave underneath here? How is the geyser? Because I'm sure there's a position for this geyser where we can drop in and it takes us to some place different than the cave we came out of to get up here, right? This totally looks like it. Is, this looks like it's maybe the position that we came out of the first time, because it shoots us directly into that inclined rock face. So let's try to get the geyser to move. All right, move to the center. We know that if you go down in the center, it just drops you in that same cavern. I wonder if that music cue is um, is intended as a time warning, though. All right, well, I do believe that'll be uh, the universe coming to an end. Let's see if we can figure out what's in this cavern before the supernova consumes Timberhearth. It does look like it's the same cavern, maybe? Yeah, because now it's just, like, in the corner. All right, where are we at? 58 minutes. So is that... Is that 20... Two minutes? Did I say 36 at the beginning of the, the day? That is not a lot of time to work with. It's possible that there are things that we can do that will affect it. Uh, maybe we can maybe we can make some changes that will slow down the process and buy us more time. We're gonna have to get a lot better at space flight if, if we want to be able to reliably navigate to places and actually get things done in 22 minutes. All right, let's do one more cycle. We're going we're gonna to go to one more death, and then we'll end the episode. We haven't gotten a lot done this episode, but I feel like we've learned a ton. I have a way better grasp of the mechanics of the thing. The mechanics of the loop, at least. All right, I feel like we were close to figuring something out with the geyser. But let's go have a new experience. Let's end the episode with a new experience. Let's just fly up to some other body and see if we can't see something really cool. So the question is, which body do we want to go to? I don't really want to go to Giant Deep. Giant's Deep? Yeah, Giant's Deep. Because water is scary. Let's try Brittle Hollow. We can get to Brittle Hollow. Or I guess we could just go to the Adel Rock. 
Yeah, let's do that. Let's go to the Yaddle Rock. Where is the Yaddle Rock? Oh, that's it. That's it right there. This seems like a reasonable first Spacefarer's destination, right? If there's one thing that I do know about Kerbal Space Program, it's that you start by going to the moon. Well, you start by blowing up the rocket on the launch pad a bunch of times, but then eventually you go to the moon. Well, there's like unambiguously stuff built on the Adel Rock. Alright, so we're just gonna go into landing mode here. Just carefully, carefully. We're landing right next to the flag that was planted the first time somebody landed here. Alright, unbuckle. Suit. And here we go. So I, I cannot remember... Which guy was it that was the first... I'm gonna have such a hard time with their names. This is presumably the initial landing site. It kind of looks like you could just reach up and touch it, doesn't it? Alright, what else is going on in this rock? Let's try to find our way toward some of that stuff that we saw. Turns out on the dark side of the moon, it is dark. That's probably why they call it that. Just sort of wandering off into the dark. Okay. So it turns out you can just uh, escape the gravity of the Adorok, like, extremely easily. Ow. It also turns out I never fire the thrusters early enough. So what's going on here? Can't quite make it over this route. There we go. We have to use our downward thrusters a lot. Church research notes. Property of church. Man, you gotta stop leaving your stuff everywhere. This is an old crater. The neat thing here is that the composition of the samples I took from the impact site matches the composition of the ice on the outskirts of Dark Bramble. I'd posit the Adel Rock was hit with a piece of the planet that used to be where Dark Bramble now lies. To follow up on, maybe there are more fragments of the old planet Dark Bramble destroyed on other astral bodies in the solar system. So, Chert's hypothesis is that Dark Bramble, which is literally a big plant, I think, at this point, yeah, like, it it was a plant that was part of a planet, and it grew into the core and then pressed out and destroyed the planet, flinging chunks of it to lots of other places. And now it's firing intergalactic seeds out to Hearth, which is bad. Which would, if the sun wasn't about to go supernova and destroy the whole thing, that would be really bad, right? That would be, like, a serious existential threat. Okay, the gravity here is, like, real weird. I feel like I'm turning slowly, like what was the ground became the wall there. Let's try to get out of this particular crater. And do so in a way that doesn't take me out into space without my ship, because that's a terrifying prospect. Right, we'll try to do like a circular search. We'll walk around from the ship in a slowly growing spiral. There we go. Here's something interesting. Is this also Church doing? No, Esker's signal scope log. We don't we don't know Esker. I think that's a new name. Day 48, still not picking up Rebex banjo from Brittle Hollow. I'm sure they're fine, but I'll feel better once I can hear their music. Day 51. Listen to Chert play for a while today. Unrelated, someone should tell Porphy and Gossen their, their flirting is not subtle from an aerial perspective. Day 55. Banjo music coming in loud and clear today. Sounds like Rebeck's doing okay. That oaf. I was worried. Day 63. Thought I heard something strange. I don't know. It's probably nothing. Day 70. No, it's back again today, too. Something strange is coming from Timberhearth. I wonder if this is a reference to the, to the signal we were hearing in the crater. Day 76. Okay, I know this is crazy, but the sound from Timberhearth sounds exactly like Feldspar's harmonica. But Feldspar disappeared in space ages ago. It can't be them. 
Day 88. It's still here. This is creepy. Maybe my signal scope is broken. I'd better talk to Nice. Nice, maybe? I mean, there's definitely a harmonica sound. We heard this before. Trying to find the harmonica sound, let's see if we can get close to it, might be a good goal for next episode. The first run of next episode. All right, we saw some other interesting stuff on the moon. Oh, three minutes oxygen. You know what? Let's let's go back to the ship and replenish the oxygen. That is nearby. Hey, man, how you doing? You don't even need a helmet up here, huh? Oh, hey, it's you! Ground control didn't tell me you were launching. Long time no see. Actually, I guess it's been a long time since I've seen anyone. Is that you whistling? Uh, probably. Or, actually, definitely. The other travelers carry instruments, so they don't bother whistling. You can pick up their music with a signal scope, you know. Best spot for that is the North Pole. Great reception. I wonder if that's actually a concern? Like, if there are places where we're, our signal scope is going to be less effective? North Pole is marked in red on your mini-map, but the Idle Rock is a pretty small moon, really. Just go north. You can't miss it. Don't go. Uh, I mean, uh, anything else you wanted to ask? Aw. She's lonely. Or they're lonely. Uh, seems lonely up here. A little. I'm in touch with ground control. Hornfels and Gossin, mostly. And they radio up to chat now and then. And when ground control forgets I'm up here, and they usually do, I launch my little scout at the village. You spy on us? Oh no, it's not spying, it's... Uh, it's one-way communication that none of the villagers know about, because I've never told them. Do the other travelers not come by? Uh, the lunar outpost saw more traffic back when our ships were less sophisticated and needed more frequent repairs. Nowadays, it's mostly used to keep a set of eyes on things. Sometimes Chirk comes by to say hi, but Gabbro is Gabbro, and you know how Rebek feels about unnecessary space flight. I have some strong feelings about that subject myself. Alright, what is this place? Welcome to the Lunar Outpost, which apparently the space program doesn't bother to teach anyone anymore. When we first started Outer Wilds, travelers used to bring their ships here all the time for repairs. Our spacefaring technology has improved loads since then, but the older ships tended to, uh, fall apart a lot. Like, more than they do now. Using the outpost cut down on the number of launches and landings taking place in the village and also the number of fires. Nowadays, though, it's mostly just me up here raising saplings from Timberhearth and keeping an eye on things. Well, I'm sorry to leave you all alone here, but, you know, we do have mysteries to solve. Oh, I'm still getting an unidentified signal nearby. Okay. Now the signal is properly identified. It's not enough to know what it is. You have to point the signal scope at it. We cannot open Esker's door. Is there like an observation post up here? Okay, no. There's a weird quality some of the things going on here. So we do, oh, holy crap. We have a, we totally have a planetary scale mini map just on the left side of the screen that I've not really been thinking of as a mini, I don't know what I thought that instrument was for, but like that's, that's absolutely the thing I wanted. Why can I not lift off here? There we go. Yeah, sometimes it kind of feels like it, um, kind of feels like the jets are fighting you a little bit. All right, so this is the observation post on the North Pole. Let's just point the signal scope around from here and see if we see anything interesting. So the Esker signal is nearby. That's the harmonica signal. This is part of the reason they want you to come up here, right? Is so that you can get a clear read on the harmonica. Whatever that signal is, it's coming from really far away. I'm sure it's on the other side of the... Yeah, it's on the other side of the sun. What is that that I'm looking at right there? On the other side of the sun from us is Giant's Deep. Yeah, probably that symbol is coming from Giant's Deep.
Okay, and there's a handy trail on the map to keep track of what. Yep, okay. It's remarkable how a thing can be directly in front of your face and you can somehow miss it. Not new information for me. I have known about my propensity to do that for a long time. So this is still the crystal crater, right? Unless this is a different crystal crater. Which means that uh, this this is like a significant portion of the planet's surface. A significant percentage of the planet's surface is in that crater. As you can see on the minimap where our trail was earlier. Now let's go to the South Pole and see if there's anything there. There sure is. This looks maybe Nomai in origin? Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, I guess let's just pick one. Oh, wow. Is it playing me sound from that planet? Hold on, let's see if we can roll the ball back. I'm going to get something else here. This is neat. I was going to align to point at whatever that is. I'm sure we'll learn the celestial bodies by sight eventually. Uh, that is probably that is brittle hollow. Okay. Well, what is this one? Oh, there's another option over here. Yeah, okay, that does look like the sun, doesn't it? Turns out the sun mostly sounds angry. I wonder if this is going to point us at... Where are, we, where are we aligned in here? Oh, I thought at first it was aligning on um, what used to be that planet over there, but it's actually kind of not pointing at anything, huh? Okay, it sort of looks like a purple supernova. We'll have to keep an eye out for that symbol if we see it again anywhere. Hey, these are very strange trees. Yeah, that symbol. That one right there. Well, we got something here. I was upstairs testing the eye signal locator, and it can hear and follow signals from the sun, giant's deep, and brittle hollow. However, something strange is happening when I ask the eye signal locator to follow the eye's signal. The device indicator rotates wildly and never points to just one direction. This is a curious result. It's possible the eye has stopped calling out its signal. Ooh, Thatch. That's a new name, I think. So is Felix. C. I most likely calibrated the locator incorrectly. Privet, my apprentice, and I will make adjustments and try again. An update. Disappointingly, everything is correctly calibrated after all. It saddens me to posit this, my friends, but I believe we need to build a more sophisticated device if we want to find the exact location of the Eye of the Universe. Then we will build it. Don't lose hope, Kasaba. Our search for the Eye is what brought our clan to this place. We won't give up so easily. Okay, that seems like a very important piece of information. And again, we have a, a scroll that we could pull. Maybe we should be taking the scrolls and putting them on the ship? If we put the scroll into this other wall, does it just reproduce the same text? I'm assuming that the text is actually written on the scroll. Oh, hey, look! The, um, the writing that's sort of spidered along the edge of the scroll looks like the same... The same sort of shapes that were on that thing that I posited might be a clock earlier. Okay, yeah, this the text is always going to be the same no matter what wall we plug it into. Alright, then what does this one say? Where should this new, more sophisticated locator be built? It may need to be larger than this eye signal locator is. The southern glacier on Brittle Hollow, uh, Brittle Hollow has ample available space. I could construct a new building to house this proposed locator. 
Yes, let's build there. I imagine our young friend Kanoi would enjoy that immensely. He's always held a great interest in the eye, especially for a child born so long after the crash. I'll begin a construction on Brittle Hollow's South Pole immediately then. Alright, well this is some direction for us. Anana and those of us originally stranded on the Ember Twin built a quantum moon locator there, but the heat of the sun made its construction challenging. I wouldn't recommend building on that planet. Okay, so there's a locator for the Quantum Moon somewhere on the Ember Twin. So the Hourglass Twins is the name of the binary system. One of them is the Ember Twin and one of them is the Ash Twin. Okay, that makes sense. Is that... It looks like that is maybe all that is down here. Oh no, there's a, a recording as well. Okay, wow. Wow. I've seen this ruin in other travelers' pictures, but seeing it for myself, it's really old, isn't it? Oh wow, this is the coolest day of my life. Okay, uh, time for some official notes. So this is some kind of Nomai locator. It can point out the different planets, which is incredibly cool, by the way. But from what little I can understand of the writing here, I think it was built to try to find something specific. I'm not sure. I also was able to translate something about the South Pole of Brittle Hollow, so I'll fly there and see if I can learn more. Yep, just gonna get back in the old ship and take off. Totally safe. Mostly safe. Oh, stars above. Alright, so that's gotta be Reback, right? Who left that? Because you know how Reback feels about... or Ryback, maybe? Uh, how they feel about unnecessary space flight. So that means, if I'm interpreting this correctly, and let's pull the, uh... Pull the orb out of here. Just so that this will stop spinning so that I feel safer leaving. Uh, that means that the stuff we found on the twin was, like, really old. It may have been, chronologically, some of the first ruins that we will ever find. Alright, I think maybe we just want to go to the South Pole of Brittle Hollow. And that can be what we do while we wait for the galaxy to end. What is this? It sure looks like our ship, except uh, embedded pretty hard in the surface of the moon. So, somebody had a rough go of it. Even rougher than some of our goes have been. Okay, let's just patch up a little bit here. And the computer is dutifully recording all of this stuff. Alright, Brittle Hollow. Riddle Hollow, I can do this. I can do this. So... Where the hell is Brittle Hollow? Move away from the Edel Rock. That's Giant's Deep. That's Brittle Hollow all the way over there. Okay, sun's starting to get pretty large and angry. Let's make sure that we take a nice wide path around the sun. Yeah, let's get to the South Pole of Brittle Hollow and see if we can discover the other locator facility. So that, that big purple symbol, or I guess it was only purple in that case, because we saw it on the, uh, in gold on the wall of the chamber below, is the Eye of the Universe, which is a thing that the Nomai were looking for, for some reason. Also, at some point, there was a crash. Um some kind of catastrophe that precipitated them moving into this solar system in the first place. Okay, accelerate. We're totally gonna catch it. We're totally gonna catch it. I'm like, I'm actually becoming okay at this. We're coming in a little hot. Slightly fast. Well, I see why they call it Brittle Hollow. Wow. The game is kind of amazing. Okay, we need to be very careful on Brittle Hollow. Holy crap. Speaking of being careful. Okay. Good enough. Velocity matched. Thank you, computer. All right, let's have a look around. It doesn't look like there are any big rocks in this part of the sky that is currently above us. Coming down to crash, but we should try to get inside the thing. Well, I guess let's head south. Yeah, sky looks clear. 
I wonder what kind of time scale we're talking about here. Because obviously, things in this universe don't quite function on the same scale as things in our universe. Boy, you can just see all the way to the core, huh? That's actually... It's kind of beautiful from space. From here, it's absolutely terrifying. That maybe what we're looking for? No, that's not quite south. What is that? Is that maybe that's Ryback's ship? Okay. All right. I can do this. I can do this. I'm not going to look down. Yeah, that's definitely a lander. Can we access the lander? Maybe access the computer in the lander? No, it does not look like the hatch will open for me. All right, well, let's just check out the locator facility then. Oh, maybe I should be using my signal scope here. Jesus! Ah, oh, okay. <clears throat> that scared all of the hell right out of me. Right back the guitar player? We de That's definitely a thing we know. Uh, but I do not remember who had which instrument. Aside from Feldspar having the harmonica. Well, you know, I was just kind of assuming there was going to be a door in one of the walls. Maybe that's not a safe assumption. Maybe we should try to go to the top. Maybe that's why these, um, these stepped structures are built along the sides. Alright. Even if there was going to be a, um... A door in one of the walls. This would be a, going up to the top would be a pretty good way to find it. Okay, there absolutely is not an opening in the top of this thing. I do kind of want to stand on the top though, just to just to do it. Yeah. So how do you get in? We're gonna have to get in from underneath, maybe. Hold on, there's some of those triangle lights over here. Did I, like, miss an entrance that's dug into the rock? Yes, I absolutely did. Okay. I'm here. I did it. I put the ship down safely. Um, in that the ship went down and I didn't sustain bodily harm. A few minor repairs and it's like the ship never even hit those rocks. One of my better attempts. Feldspar would have barely laughed at me, I bet. That's the good news. The bad news, I uh, haven't found a way inside this structure yet. The door's broken, and I know I'm not great at exploring, but I think I would have found a different entrance by now if there were one. P probably. I can't get inside from here, but I know there are paths below the surface. I'm gonna head north to the ruins on the equator to try to find a way down. Is that... yep, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, is all that noise the sun going supernova? It turns out it is. Alright, well, I think we know exactly where we're going to start next episode. I am very eager to try to find a way into that facility. It seems like the Nomai technology... I don't know. Like, it must react for other people. I, at first I was going to say maybe it only reacts for us, for whatever reason. Maybe because of whatever the Nomai statue did to us when, uh, when it looked at us. But it must work for other people, because Ryback... Uh, recorded that thing about the purpose of the facility. So presumably he was also able, or they were also able to roll the marble around. But, I'm just thinking because of that cave that we found right here on Hearth, that apparently nobody had opened, because I have to imagine the skeletons would have been moved to the museum if they had, I'm wondering if maybe some of the Nomai technology doesn't work for everybody, so where Ryback was not able to get into that facility, maybe we will be. I don't know, it's definitely a thing worth examining next time. But for now, we are out of time. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope everybody else is as intrigued by this as I am. Uh, I cannot wait to play more. It's unfortunately going to have to be a little bit later today. Uh, so come back then for more, and we'll see you then.